I was getting mad at my phone again because when I was driving home and, and the auto rotate had turned itself off and I didn't know how to turn it back on. And I was just getting so fucking mad at it. Just like screaming at it. <laughs> I was going to say in public, but I was in my car in public. Like I was in the public square in the, in the eye of the city, <laughs> surrounded by people walking by and they could just see me going, fucking gun phone, motherfucker. Well, maybe not. But, um, but I do wonder about like, when I get angry at my phone or whatever kind of thing in my car and I'm yelling, I think it's not like my car, I kind of realize my car doesn't just hold in the noise that I'm making, you know? I kind of feel like, oh, no one can hear me in here. I can just yell out all these racial slurs to my phone and it's fine. No, but I got to look out. There might be a, a um, diverse person walking by my car and then they'll call the police and have me canceled. So I got to be aware of that. I got to be aware of my surroundings. But uh, yeah, I don't think there was, I don't think there was anyone around. But <laughs> it's so stupid because my auto rate rotate was off. I guess that just happens sometimes. I understand. Like my phone has a dumb thing where it's you, you double tap the screen to turn it on, and sometimes that happens automatically if I'm like going for a run with my phone on me, and then it must have just gone and then turned off the auto rotate, just to be like. Yeah, oh, that's understandable. That's not a shitty thing of my phone to do. And if I've got such a problem with that, I should turn off that double tap feature. And I'm thinking about it, right? I'm thinking about it. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. You know, I just want to do this podcast so that perhaps I could come up with a joke. You know, that's how I, that's my fucking mentality towards podcasting is like if I do this continuously. No, well, what I really think is that it makes me a better uh conversator <laughs> like if i do this enough times i will uh become better at talking to women i go up to women like hey ladies remember the 1998 godzilla movie remember the trailer oh it's really scary <laughs> yeah want to come home with me <laughs> we can watch godzilla if that were the case yeah we would watch the first 40 minutes or, or around about and then the rest of the movie would be us sucking each other off <laughs> i'm sucking her off i'm sucking yeah i'm sucking her you know you know what i'm talking i'm talking about a clit obviously i'm just sucking i just grab into my mouth and just <laughs> oh, <laughs> gagging on it that's a big clit <laughs> she's deep frightening me with your clit Ugh, man i don't like a big clit <laughs> i really don't you know you ask me that i'll be like nope don't like it in fact, I prefer my women not to have clits. And that's why I'm in support of clitoral circumcision. <laughs> Jesus. Um, what should I talk about first? Should I talk about the stabbings <laughs> or the Beetlejuice trailer? Oh, Beetlejuice. Uh, let's go with the funnier thing. <laughs> no, uh, so the Beetlejuice, uh, who gives a fuck? I haven't even seen the original. I haven't even seen the original. But what I wanted to comment on, and I haven't even seen the original, so I don't know if I'm like, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I'm right in uh, on other things. But th this trailer, it seems as if when you have films like this, like a reboot, a remake, a creative reset of these films, they they take like what I believe is a like sardonic film right Beetlejuice I don't know haven't even seen the trailer for the fucking film but I've seen a little bit of it like parts here and there and it seems like a sardonic <laughs> kind of <laughs> evil movie that kids and no one should be watching because it gives them bad ideas and tell them tells them that um you know d murder is fine because people just come back from the dead anyway I don't know is that what the film's about someone got killed and brought back to life but films like that when they're doing a reboot of it, like this kind of sardonic 80s style, who cares kind of movie with a that Gen X vibe where it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they, they take that and then they give it in a trailer like this, oh, oh, like melancholic kind of vibe where it's it, it, all that sardony. <laughs> sardonism is is gone and it's like oh will he be back i wonder <laughs> beetlejuice he's returned corp <laughs> it's like a little 
fucking, <laughs> you're like from the 1800s, little orphan. God bless me. Fucking Beetlejuice is back in it. Oh, gotta tell the governor about this. Yeah, a little kid walking around with his bloody newspaper. Um, what do they say? Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> Got a bell. <laughs> Was that a fryer? <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Beetlejuice is back. <laughs> isn't, isn't this what happens in Beetlejuice? Isn't it set in like the 1800s? <laughs> He just comes out of, like, the, the ocean and lands on a pier. And everyone's like, oh, God, blimey. Beetlejuice, yeah? That's my understanding of. But this is, yeah, this seems to be what's happening. Like, they, uh, I guess, do a vibe change, as the kids these days call it. I don't know. It seems weird. And the, uh, look, I've seen Ghostbusters. So I know that they've done it with Ghostbusters. Like, the original Ghostbusters is that kind of, like, dry wry sly shy kind of comedy movie with the <laughs> dickless kind of uh humor which is somewhat universal it's kind of for kids but there's more you know, grown-up humor in it but there's no real thing in the movie where they're like oh it's the ghost from my um it's my <coughs> dead dad's ghost beetlejuice we need to get the ghostbusters oh fuck yeah how about a beetlejuice ghostbusters mashup whatever you call those kinds of movies we need to bring them back like ghostbusters versus beetlejuice <laughs> is beetlejuice a ghost <laughs> or like or a zombie or whatever i don't know well they've done that with ghostbusters these new trailers they're all like that that melancholic thing it is like very like the films are well i'm talking shit because i haven't seen the fucking ghost but i'm not watching that fucking movie just so i can know what kind of vibe it has but i bet a trillion dollars that it's very ooh, ah, like that i was gonna say it's about nostalgia but it seems more like it just has that nostalgia permeating off it in like a very cultural um consumeristic way like oh wow look oh it's the um whatever the fucking car is called the ghost mobile from the original ghostbusters oh it's back it's back. Oh, look, it's the plasmaton gun. Uh, oh, they're dusting it off. Uh, uh, jerk off the new Ghostbusters movie. It just doesn't have that uh, that same like vibe. When like the, you'd think they'd do that with the trailer because they would you know have I don't know some respect or at least some you know of that uh, just showing that like the DNA of the first one, the vibe is uh is the same and it's like gonna be in the new film and that's why they're putting it in the trailer they'll be like hey look it really is another ghostbusters movie because otherwise it just seems like i don't know just like high scale fanfic it just seems like they've taken the uh the dressing of uh, the ghostbusters movie like oh look at all the you know the, the the uh the guns and the car and the um the the the, the, the fucking jumpsuits and whatever that they wear and the, the goggles and the ghost and the, uh, the slime, all that kind of thing, but not the actual um, particular humor of the original, which is, I guess that's just a, a sign of the, of the times because the 80s had that, like, I don't know, cynical, like, uh, who cares? Just you know, make money and pay the rent and do coke and that kind of thing, kind of humor, like, ha, ha, ha. Gen X humor, and then nowadays humor, it seems, is just more like, oh, woohoo, wow, it's the thing from my childhood. It's like, I can kind of see it, but it's not really there. And there's like a really, like, sort of hazy, glassy, like, lens to the, to the, like, cinematography. Oh, it's very wistful, and uh, oh, we gotta dust it off. Oh, play with it again. I need to dust off my Ghostbusters toys and play with them. Yay. I saw a thing in um, EB Games, like a, speaking of like how expensive uh, toys are in the last episode, there was like a Ghostbusters, yeah, Plasmaton uh, car, whatever the car is from the fucking new movie. I guess that's all it was. And it was like, I don't know, a ridiculous price, like $3,000 or something stupid. And my friend was complaining about it. He's like, oh man, you know, it's just like rich people don't want to buy this, you know. But who's going to have the money for it? And I thought, like, it would have been sold by now, but I guess not. That's strange. You don't, like, you'd imagine there'd be, like, rich nerds out there who, you know, have, like, 
who are psychopaths and uh, and Ghostbuster fans. <laughs> they go hand in hand, those two. They would just like have the money for it. They'd be like, I can easily drop $3,000 on a Ghostbuster toy that I can put on my shelf and look at. Yay. Uh, it's fucking means nothing to me, this kind of money. Uh, you would think they would do that. They'd like look at it at EB and go, oh, it's 3,000 bucks. I have the money for that shit. I could just, just throw it away, <laughs> throw it down the toilet. Yeah, that must be, uh, it must be nice to be rich. Like when you have those moments where you see something, you're just like, oh, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> just that kind of feeling. Cause I never do that. I look at, if I see something I want to get, I'm like, um, Oh, no, nah, I'll, I'll like, look it up on eBay and see if I can get it for cheaper. So I don't have that, like, you know, immediate getting it, like, hey, kind of feeling. Because I was kind of feeling that way when I was looking for a bookstore the other day. And I had, like, just gotten paid from, like, my new job. So I was, like, uh, yeah, pretty broke. I had 57 cents <laughs> um, and before. But then I got my big paycheck and I was, like, nice. And I hadn't even spent any of it yet. And I was looking through this bookstore like, oh, I'm going to buy this. Uh, like, and I was just chilling there. I didn't like plan on going to a bookstore. I just like went in and um, yeah, was just looking around, killing time. Yeah, and I did see like uh, in the film section, they had like a John Waters book where it's like that like coffee table book where it's got um, just pictures and <laughs> text. and <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, it's not like a book book uh, with just text and all and that sort of thing, but, um, but it looked pretty neat, and it was like, how much, 45, 65, I'm gonna buy it, <laughs> yeah, there's a few other ones, and they're like over a hundred dollars, it's like, fuck, my, fuck, so expensive, ah. yeah, you know, those kinds of uh, coffee table books, where they got like, you know, photos and shit, and they're really nice pages, and prints, you know, that sort of thing, yeah, I was hanging out with this like same friend of mine, and then we, we then we went into another EB Games, and um, yeah, just looking through all the crap they have there, and like how expensive toys are. I mean, I keep saying, but fuck, toys are expensive. <laughs> I don't know. You, you see some of them there, and it's just yeah, you know, like close to a hundred dollars for like a reasonably sized thing. Like mm, I don't know, man. When I, when I was a kid, I had and like the toys I had weren't just like these dumb like plastic things that I guess looked life like like that they had like you know buttons with voices and shit you know they would talk to you you could press the button and you hear like a <laughs> that kind of thing coming from them and you're like yeah all right and there may be a it may do like a kick or a a sea kyle <laughs> whatever thing going along with it so it had like an electronic component to them uh, i was gonna say something fuck um Anyway, whatever. Back to this Beetlejuice like trailer. I mean, it is very much a teaser. It doesn't even show fuck all. It just establishes the town. It's got like a appears to have like that Stranger Things vibe where it's like, oh, you know, old Americana town. Whoa, very comfy. And well, this kind. Of, Wouldn't you like to live here and do remote work? Well, too bad the job that you have in the hellscape of a city or town that you live in requires you to go to work. You can't just do it on, on Zoom and all that kind of thing. Not you stay here and you pay ridiculous amounts of rent and so forth. Wouldn't you like to live here though? Ooh, watch the Beetlejuice movie. Ugh. Pay twenty three dollars for a fucking ticket to go see it. Uh, it does what a teaser is meant to do, especially for like a nostalgia film where it's just like they show the old Beetlejuice car <laughs> that he drove. Remember, remember in Beetlejuice when he did, drove a car? It's the same car. Oh, but it's got like a tarp over it. But you can kind of see underneath. Oh, and then a gust of wind comes by and blows it up a little. And then you see the number underneath or the license plate that you, um, that you, uh, the same license plate from the first movie. Oh, oh, I'm getting a nostalgia boner. And then he just appears. He, he appears and he's like, the juice is loose. Yeah, boy. And then it has the name of the movie, which I kind of like. It's funny. It's called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Instead of just Beetlejuice part two, chapter two. It's just, um, I don't know if that like particular name, even though I find amusing, like, I don't know if that's a reference to the first movie. Again, I, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, 
I don't know. There's something annoying about it. There's, <laughs> there's just something annoying. Just imagining the people watching you being like, oh, it's Beetlejuice. Uh, he just goes, uh, and they're like, oh, I'm going to dress up like him for Comic-Con and Halloween. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm really shitting on nerd culture. Geek culture, as I, I'd call it, because nerds are... Isn't a nerd just someone who's just, like, really into a thing? Like, you can be a gun nerd, a porn nerd. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I think I've always felt that way. Geek is, like, someone who's a nerd, but they're into, like, the nerd shit, like, dude, science and, like, technology. And then, like, you know, science fiction and these dumb fantasy movies. And they're also... They appear to be people who... Um, <laughs> maybe I'm projecting, but they're people who love their childhood and hate their adulthood. And that's why they need all these like reboots and remakes of all their favorite films from when they were a kid. So they can just, uh, have that like nostalgia feeling like, Oh, I remember that <laughs> I remember from my childhood when I watched, why don't you just watch the original Beetlejuice on a VHS on your fucking CRT TV? And just do it that way, you motherfuckers. I don't know if I, I don't know if I mentioned this in a, a, another podcast, and I probably didn't, because I'm always repeating myself. I don't care. But like, I've been watching a lot of, not a lot, but like some. I don't know if you get like YouTube recommendations that like don't have many views. They've literally got like just a few hundred, and they came out however long ago. Uh, I see some of them, and I keep clicking on them, so I get more coming through. But they're just like uh, VHS like openings you know like a, an opening on a vhs with like the trailers and the spooky warning or is a like, warning do not copy this film and like ominous red text like, like honestly honestly some of those videos i've been watching and it's just like a rip of the vhs because i want my nostalgia feeling Ooh. but but then i've seen somewhere it isn't not not ripping it not v ripping the vhs digitally it's them like just recording it with their fucking camera so it's like the TV, perhaps a CRT, is like blowing out like the, it's got like big bloom. You can't even see the TV properly. And then like as things change on the on, on that opening and whatever, like it goes from like a big uh, colorful thing back to black. Like the, the, what would it be? Aperture maybe? Or the light sensitivity keeps changing with the uh with the camera it's just really shaky and you can hear the person going uh, 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 put it in now yeah and yeah i've been watching a bunch of these and um they're all autistic people <laughs> they're all autistic and some of them seem uh severely <laughs> autistic and I get a kick out of it. I'm uh, I'm a little bit um, fascinated by it. I'm not watching it like in a bullying way. Ooh, these autistic people, <laughs> what do they know? People are like, no, you're punching down on autistic people. How dare you? Which would be a weird thing to say because why uh, autistic people blow me, huh? Well, it seems like you're the one being offensive. Mm. Oh man, I'm getting tired from this already. I was like really on the piss last night because of um, I was at a mate's thirtieth, and oh, I had fucking four beers. <laughs> oh, I'm drunk. Um, nah, I had like fucking fourteen beers, and I wasn't even drunk. <laughs> nah, I certainly was. Jesus, and I had a few taxis <laughs> as well. They were being passed around, so I did want something else. And um, yeah, it really, it really did me. I felt bad. I felt bad, like, just being in the Uber on the way back, like, oh, and I zonked out in the back and, like, <laughs> grinding my teeth. And, um, yeah, I do remember getting the drive home um, and just sitting in the back, just, oh, I'm sure this Uber driver's seen this before, just people like, oh, in the back seat. Yeah, but, like, I don't remember, like, entering my house. I don't remember much about, like, going to bed. Because I know I must have stayed up for a little bit trying not to puke. <laughs> I just kind of remember that. And then I was like, oh, I feel better now. I'm going to bed. And then I went to bed. And then I had to go to fucking work. Oh, <laughs> wasn't too early. A 12 o'clock start, but shit. And only a six-hour shift. Oh, mercy me. 
But <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I went to, yeah, I only get up like 30 minutes before I even have to get to work. And yeah, I got up and I was, went to work still feeling pretty teeth grindy. <laughs> and I was like, mm. <laughs> oh, well, I've been to work feeling worse before. Oh, man. I felt, I felt, I felt better, like, as the day went on. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing okay. I just have, like, my lips are, like, kind of crackly. And, <laughs> but I felt okay. I wasn't sick or felt like I had to shit, <laughs> any of that sort of thing. But I didn't care about being hung over that badly. It was when I was out with my mates and we were, like, really getting on the piss and uh, we were at a strip club. <laughs> and this job I used to work at, like, the roster would sometimes come out real late. Like, it was usually meant to come out, like, on a Thursday for like next Monday starting on. Sometimes it would be on a Sunday though it would come out. And then, yeah, this was a Sunday. We were at a strip club on a fucking Sunday. And uh, at 10, it was 10.30, uh, I went into the toilets and that's like the only place you could check your phone in, in the strip club. <laughs> Couldn't know this etiquette. So, uh, but I was checking my phone in there while taking a piss and I saw the uh, shifts had come out and I had a seven o'clock start. That's eight and a half hours away. Fuck! As you know, it isn't. I got my fucking math wrong on that. Uh, what's like what nine and a half? I don't know, but I'm still, I'm still out getting drunk, man. I was like, I looked at it and I just went, "Fuck you!" I'm still, I'm still, I, I still like, you know, w w we went on until like two thirty, three a.m. And I was like, "Well, gotta go home and get my five hours sleep." <laughs> So I did that and went to work and I was like, I don't care. You put it out this late. Too bad. All right. Time to talk about a fun topic right now with the stabbings in the uh, Christ 2 <laughs> in Sydney. Um, yeah, in case you didn't hear, there was a stabbing in Sydney. Uh, and I would see like... Uh, I would see like headlines saying like seven people killed in the stabbing and I think to myself, oh, it's terrible. This person stabbed and killed seven people. That's what I'm thinking. It's like there are seven people that were fucking killed by this guy. That's what I'm thinking. And then when you click on the article or whatever, it's like six people he killed and then also he died as well. And I'm like, oh, well, that doesn't count. <laughs> he doesn't count. That's bullshit. That's like when people say... I think it's um, when they say, like, RIP to the 2,991 people that died in the 9-11 attacks. I'm like, that includes the terrorists, <laughs> the 19 terrorists that did this. Like, uh, are you sure about that? Do you want to take that off? So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> well, that happened. <laughs> oh, man, it was just very serious. I'm not going to be making any jokes about this whole um, travesty, this tragedy that uh, uh occurred recently in sydney and claimed the lives of six people <laughs> i'm not gonna even take a stab at it <laughs> oh no wonder i've been cancelled uh yeah no so i don't really have much to say about it in fact i probably wouldn't even be bringing it up at all if it weren't for the fact uh of if it weren't for like what i fucking saw that just did my fucking head in like there are certain things that do my head in, and I just um, really cannot, like, my brain can't even, like, process it at all. It cannot at all. It just, it won't, like, it's like it won't go in my brain. I'm just looking at this thing going, oh, this is stupid. It's like trying to put a fucking, um, you know, like a cube through a circular hole. I, I, I was seeing, like, I, I guess I heard about this through, like, you know, YouTube news and whatever, and they had these initial videos coming out where it's like, oh no, four people died and a bunch of others have been stabbed and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they don't, like one of them here, uh, you know, just says killed at least six. <laughs> at least, oh God, maybe more. Um, this was kind of like before much information about the perpetrator had come out. And, but you can see, like, you can see videos uh, I mean, footage, like, you know, the security footage in the, uh, in this video talking about it and it shows him, you know, doing his whole thing. And, and it kind of shows what he looks like, I guess. I mean, it's not the best high quality 4k footage and it's kind of like a, you know, uh, extreme long shot of the guy or whatever, but here's, th these are some of the comments that were coming up. And by the way, these are comments that are like up the highest because they keep getting, um, thumbs up. 
um, and this is also on the Telegraph, and I don't know much about them as a news source, but here's what it is along the lines. Radical, peaceful community spreading peace. Rampant immigration really paying off for Australia. When the criminal is barely described, we all know what that means. <laughs> One of them just says, not surprised. <laughs> With a bunch of thumbs up and no comments. What does that even mean? Oh, six people got stabbed in Sydney. Wow, this doesn't happen very often. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Here's a good one. I was hoping Australia wouldn't make the same mistakes we have in Europe. When we will, when will we all wake up? Fucking hell, the alliteration on that sentence. When will we all wake up? Is it again religion of peace? The religion of peace. The religion of peace strikes again. <laughs> Diversity strikes again. Remember, these have hundreds of thumbs up. This is not Australia. My heart goes, because there's a full stop, out to all the families and people affected. It has also, it has also, it has my, my <laughs> It has also has, it has also has my mind go a bit numb. Deepest sympathy to the families and people. Families spelt wrong, of course. Immigrant assailant. Diversity is our strength. This gift comes from progressive leftists all over the world. Thanks so much. Protect your borders. Protect your cultures, mate. Usual suspects. Was it the will of Allah again? Wake up, Australia and the West. Wake up has a hyphen for some reason. The peaceful religion again. Never trust the peaceful. I said this 10 years ago and everyone said I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling culturally enriched yet? Oh my god, I could go all day with these. These are fucking great. That's cute. This one says cancer, and the C is spelt with what I believe is the, um, I believe that's the Islamic symbol, which is like a crescent moon. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Shock of transition from Ramadan to eating during the day. <laughs> Oh, he's trying to have a joke. <laughs> Good on you. Oh man, you're you're ready. You're ready. Know who it is. Diversity, equity, inclusion. All right. Yeah, I could do this all fucking day. Um, look at all the Australian news networks with comments turned off. Scared of the truth says it all. Right, so as um, I've been talking with all these fucking comments, which I could do all fucking night. Um, yeah, before the, uh, the identity of uh, the attacker was uh, revealed, it seems like a lot of, uh, of the comments that were most upvoted were heavily, heavily insinuating that it was a Muslim, Islamic, immigrant attacker. That was uh, who this man was uh, I wouldn't even say insinuations they were just flat out saying that's what it was that's what it was who the attacker was bloody Muslim again bloody Muslim when are we gonna learn when are they gonna listen to me I got all the fucking answers eh <laughs> yeah and then the um then the identity of the attacker came out and he was a uh, honky <laughs> He was a white guy. He was a real, the honkiest looking man. A real, a real like cracker, you know, just a real, real, real white, you know, just a really kind of ordinary looking whitey, white boy, Italian sounding last name, um, kind of man. Uh, not really sure of his um, religious status, but uh, he wasn't exactly an immigrant. I believe he was born 
in Australia and um, I don't know, my guess is atheism or Christianity of uh, some sort. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> oh my God, man. I, I can't remember if I saw all these comments like before that was revealed. I was thinking like, Oh, yeah, well, you know, maybe he is Muslim. <laughs> and everyone can have these comments saying, like, Oh, great, diversity strikes again. Look at this Muslim acting up in here. Can't you? <laughs> and we let him in. We just let him all in to kill our bloody people with a knife. You call that a knife, Packy? That's a knife. <laughs> can't. <laughs> yeah. So suffice to say, all these people are fucking retarded, stupid fucking morons. God damn, man. How dumb can you be? How fucking... If this guy was a Muslim, an immigrant, a, 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 a um, Islamic, Middle Eastern, whatever. All right, whatever. <laughs> Have your bloody fun with it all. I probably still wouldn't even be... I, I certainly wouldn't be talking about it right now. But oh, no. No, you're completely dead fucking wrong. Some of the other comments are people saying, oh, yeah, he was a white guy. And they got like four thumbs up. But everyone else is just like, oh, I, oh, oh it wasn't a Muslim. Oh, well, it could have been. Oh, you just don't know these days. Oh, these days. It wasn't like this back in my time. We had, you know, sardonic comedy movies that appeal to people of all different ages. We had a real city slicker, slacker kind of vibe going on where we didn't care that much and all now these days you got like melancholic nostalgic packies fucking knifing cunts in this in the bloody uh in bloody westfield oh not like in my day mate and as and as i'm just finding out now uh let's see uh Let's see, I believe he was injured. So, there was a fellow, uh, a security guard, who is an immigrant. I believe he came from, um, Persia. <laughs> came from Mesopotamia. I don't know, he immigrated from somewhere like that. Um, who cares? And, uh, I think he'd only been over here for a month, I guess. I don't know. I could look it up right now, and I can't be bothered. So, it's the millennial quality you're getting from this podcast this kind of investigation but um he'd been here for about a month uh and he was yeah a security guard working at the place i suppose and he got stabbed trying to apprehend this man um yeah there's your fucking immigration <laughs> fuck sakes <laughs> this fucking guy everyone's like oh he was probably trying to take the knife off him so he could stab even more people oh <laughs> Oh, man, what a bunch of fucking dummies. What a bunch of fucking dumbasses. It's really not good when you have, like, these kinds of, you know, um, I don't know, ideology, I guess, opinions, you know, which, uh, you know, maybe you're not saying, you know, you're completely wrong or whatever, like, about, you know, Muslim and whatever. <laughs> it's been a few of them, I guess, over the years, so I won't deny it, but... um. But just to like, just so adamantly, just be like, it w it was, it's definitely a Muslim. It was a Muslim. Like, get straight, not even being like, hmm, who's this fellow in the video? Is he a Muslim? Is he who I think he is, huh? Is he who I think? It's like, no, nah, not this time, <laughs> mate. I mean, fair enough, because we did have that fucking um, lint chocolate <laughs> thingy go on with the... Uh, uh, yeah, all those years ago, <laughs> the chocolate, the chocolate factory shooting. <laughs> it happened in Australia. No, it was like a hostage situation. I think about eight people died in that one. Uh, yeah, from what I remember, I, I think they were ISIS. So it's like, oh, these bloody immigrants <laughs> don't even know if I'm British or Australian. So yeah, fair enough. And um, I also, <coughs> um, what was that? Uh, what was that? Um shooting that happened in russia recently <laughs> that as well um yeah what happened there because uh, i think that was isis it was boko haram <laughs> boko harambe boko haram sounds like an anime for some reason boko haram um yeah wow they fucking did a good job well done guys <laughs> fucking hell they killed like 120 people or something people 
go on about like rightfully about the US, you know, having like a huge like epidemic of mass shootings and so on. Sure, yeah, they do. <laughs> they have a bunch of them. But then you, you look like, oh my god, another shooting happened today. Oh, we're napping here in Australia. We just have knife attacks. But then you find out these um like the shooting, it's like three people die, and you're like we fucking should have planned that out a little better. <laughs> Gee, three people. You have a huge... You got like an automatic, a shotgun, and then a pistol for, you know, to, t- to ride it all off, I guess. And you're like, oh, no, it's jammed. <laughs> Could have blown it like a Nintendo 64 cartridge. <laughs> oh, hang on, guys. Can you, can you just wait? I got to clean it. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I only got one chance at this crap. <laughs> I'm trying to kill myself with this gun and it's jammed. Yeah, and... But but there's a lot of you know good old shootings happening in Russia and uh, and Brazil as well and some other places. But boy howdy, Russia really um, knocked out the U.S. high score. Like, yeah, let's look this up. How many people died? Jamie, look that up. How many fucking cunts died in the Russian shooting? <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> it's 145. Jesus, good on you. <laughs> Christ, man, that is, um, I'm not, like, I think a lot of people got shot, and then, like, a bunch of other people died in a burning, a fire, (laughs) some sort, it's like that, um, France attack, the Bataclan, where, yeah, about a hundred people died, gee, like, these fucking, um, European countries, you have these mass shootings, like, 145 right there, the United States high score is 59, I don't know if that's counting the perpetrator, and I will not be doing that, because I don't want to give them, I don't want to even see them as people. No, I just, that doesn't count. He's always shot himself, always another victim. No, like, he's just a guy that shot himself. But he killed 59 people who were like, oh, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, like, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's really, like, that's almost uh, three times the bloody high score. Like, Fuck. And people are like, oh, whatever. Oh, but the United States, they happen all the time. <laughs> oh, someone accidentally discharged a gun near a school, like across the road from a school. Oh my God, is a school shooting. When will these st- stop? And blah, blah, blah. But yeah, fair enough, the United States. I was thinking about this today, like during my fucking work break. <laughs> I was sitting down, um, <laughs> looking at a t- tree and... Was thinking like, oh, what is it? What is it like to like be shot? You know, in the fucking, like that stabbing, getting stabbed, and that stabbing <laughs> when you got stabbed. That's like you'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? Um, just shit. This guy's stabbing people. Oh, and me. Oh, wow, I'm dead. But like with, with a shooting, especially if you live in the United States, imagine like just like you're hearing the gunshots, and it's got like, like the <laughs> <laughs> that didn't come out the way I wanted to. It's more like a I don't know, kind of thing. Uh, you hear that? You're like, oh, firecrackers, <laughs> I, I hope. No, it's a firecracker <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> and <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, and then, I don't know, you see the person, you feel yourself getting shot, you're bleeding out, you fall on the ground, you're like, oh, I am a person being shot and killed in a mass shooting. Oh, it's me. I'm one of these people. Fuck. I get to be one of these people. I will die and I won't even like read about this or hear about it in the newspaper because I will be, I am in it. I am dead from this. I don't even know who else or how many other people are dying in this attack. Oh, fuck. Oh, woe is me. Why me? Why can't it have it, been him? You probably would be like running away and there's a guy who you hate and, or a girl. Or a non-binary. <laughs> and, and like you see them running. And you fall down. You've been shot. And you see them escape. And you're like, oh great. It wasn't them. Fucking they act like a dickhead all the time. And they get a bloody prize for it. And a medal. And now they, they escaped a mass shooting. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> oh, that'd be a, a bummer. <laughs> that'd be totally fucking gay. <laughs> Dying a mass shooting. I'll tell you what. Um. I was also thinking, I, I've also been thinking, like, if I had a kid who was in a mass shooting, and I'm like, oh, no, my kid. 
<laughs> Why am I laughing about this? Oh, I got to get off work. They're like, hey, you still got work to do there. You can't just leave whenever you want. Oh, my kid, I'm out of here. Wait, I got to clock off first. Hang on, oh, it's taking a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, and I go to the school and it's like, oh, there's an active shooter. I think there's one, but there might be more. We don't know what's going on. He's still going around shooting people. Um, and then the police and the SWAT are like, outside uh the school um and and also i have a gun <laughs> i have a fucking gun I'm like, i know how to use it i have a gun um and but i'm looking at all these c- cops who aren't doing anything and they're not like entering the school uh and i'm like what a bunch of pussies <clears throat> and then i grab my gun and i like go around the back where the cops can't see me and i'm like oh, if, this, if this happened i, I would just fuck go in there and I'd save my kid. If that was me in that situation, I would be fucking waiting for these cops. Useless fucking pigs. Fucking pigs. A cab, am I right? I would just get my gun and go right in and um, accidentally shoot my son. <laughs> oh no, what a great tragedy this is. Oh, what a, that sounds like the end of, this all sounds like an A24 film. <laughs> sounds like Hopefully just the start of the movie and yeah, that's what I do. I just bust in and go around or John Wick and <laughs> I'm the hero of the day. <sighs> and then everyone will, um, and, and also in this situation, I'm a, I'm a, um, immigrant, <laughs> a Middle Eastern immigrant. And, um, everyone's like, Oh, I better know who the school shooter is. Bloody Muslims up to their shenanigans again, <laughs> shooting up a school <laughs> as they do. Oh, my kid died. Bloody Muslims again, eh? <laughs> and then I'm the I'm the Muslim that's like shooting the cracker that started all this. And I'm seeing these comments like, oh, dude, I fucking, I, I'm a Muslim and I'm the one that saved the day. And this is how you're going to talk about me. What, what am I, what, what am I going to do to fucking get you cunts on my side? I could literally give you CPR if you were in a, like a if you were dying i'd give you like the heimlich maneuver and you'd be like oh bloody packies up to their tricks again or oh, diversity strikes again saving my life fuck you go back to fucking ireland <laughs> oh anyway yeah i kind of hate my country <laughs> so um <coughs> <coughs> oh god all right, while we're on the topic of racism, let's talk about the new Ava DuVernay joint, <laughs> Origin. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if like that many people have even talked about this movie. Like, it kind of... Uh, just one of your... um, Just one of your fucking uh, Oscar bait movies where when they were making it, they're like, Oh, Ava, this could be your win. You might win. For this movie, oh, it's so amazing the way you tackle all these different <laughs> topics of race and uh, I was going to say police brutality. I guess not. I don't think that's in the movie. Uh, racism. Yeah, identity. <laughs> sure. Uh, all around the world. Wow. Um, wow, you're a sure and you're going to be the first black woman to... <laughs> Yeah, so I saw this um, movie and because, you know, I get like the film screenings, whatever, I can go to them for free. And uh, I kept seeing the trailer for it when I go to other film screenings and I was like, yeah, man, I'll go see that shit. (laughs) I don't know, there seemed to be, um, I looked at it and I just thought, "Mm, just another woke movie. (laughs) Oh, woke, woke Hollywood strikes again diversity <laughs> oh typical muslims making bloody woke movies oh i'm not watching that eh? i'm gonna watch critical drinker and nerd rotic complain about the piers morgan for 59 hours yeah that's a better use of my time anyway so <clears throat> i don't know there was something about it that i thought in the film i was like mm, it does look kind of a how do you say like kind of a i don't know I don't know. I don't know. There was something about it. Maybe it was just like, I think there are certain shots that are in 16 millimeter and I saw that and I'm like, oh, it's like A24. I want to see movie now. I don't know. But I, I went along. I saw it. Uh, I 
don't I usually go into a movie just clearing my head being like oh I'm, I'm just gonna go in with I guess no expectations it could come out however because sometimes I see a film and I guess I'm always going to have an expectation. I can't really get rid of it. Sometimes I am looking forward to a movie. I watch it and I'm like, that was as good as exactly as I expected. Uh, sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. In this film's case, it was worse. <laughs> I was kind of, Yeah, I guess I was kind of in the middle. I was like, mm, could go one way, could go another. It might be decent. But I watched it and I was like, mm, no, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um... I guess I have respect for what the film is doing because it's like, oh, it's about not just racism, but um, subjugation, I guess. Uh, uh, or uh, the history of bloody, um, yeah, subjugation and making, um, uh, demeaning um, people who look different to you, who are of a different race or a different ethnicity or a different uh, or whatever. Okay, cool. Just because that's there doesn't mean I'm going to like the movie. And I didn't because it doesn't do it well. Because the film's about this black bitch. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> uh, a pretty good performance by whatever the fuck her name is. Who cares? Um, it's a good perf- wasted performance in this shit movie. Because, like, the movie just doesn't work, like, emotionally and thematically and, um, and existentially. It's like, why does it exist? It's basically, it's, 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 it's based, it's based, it's adapted from a, um, a book. That's, I guess a non-fiction book, I believe. And it's about, it's called, what is it? It's called Cased, Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents, which won a bloody Pulitzer, I think. (laughs) Book award of some sort, who cares? So it's based on this non-fiction book, but it's about... The making of the book it's about her this woman like who is like oh i'm getting i'm getting ready to make another thesis book about uh oh, i'm gonna make it about racism oh really i'm gonna go deeper than racism i'm gonna go even deeper i'm gonna go deeper into racism talk about cast <laughs> this trump out of out of nowhere so yeah it is about that and she goes around the world um, I think she goes to Germany, I think, I don't know, she goes to India, there's Indian people being, um, subjugated, she talks to, like, a lot of other black people, uh, these Americans who have, like, all these stories about, um, like, oh, back in the 50s or back in the 80s, like, these people were like, oh, this, uh, Negro right here, he can't do this and he can't do that, you're not allowed and then it has like a close up of the black person's face being really disappointed, like, mm, oh shucks, why can't I do that? Just cause of just cause of the color of my skin and blah blah blah. And you're like, oh no, poor black person. It was really bad for them back then. But then again, oh, I guess this sort of thing still happened. You know, what's changed, man? What's really changed in the world? I don't think the film does that. Mm, I don't know. Mm, maybe. I don't know if it really implies that whole, like, oh, it's really changed. It does kind of just goes over history of, um, you know, that kind of subjugation. And I don't know, man, it's just kind of tiring. <laughs> it's just kind of tiring. And I've seen a bunch of these movies now where it's just like a, a black person uh, in like a black slave from, you know, in America just being like, ah, <laughs> I'm having a bad time. <laughs> oh, what a waste of my life. Or a Jew in the Holocaust just being like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why am I laughing? Just, again, just being like, oi vey, oh, this is bad, being in a bloody uh, concentration camp. Or, or, and I guess this was new, um, seeing a, uh, an Indian, um, what are the Indians called that, that are being subjugated? Whatever those ones are called, those guys uh, working or being slaves, I don't know, as, like, toilet cleaners, like, as in they, like, go, like, diving into, yeah, big old porter potty piles of shit, you know, and having to deal with that and being covered in shit. You see this in the movie. You see this in the movie, and it's got, like, a 
it's like slow-mo and this shit's like falling off and very slowly and he's like oh not very good <laughs> and, and there's like this swelling soaring music going it's very like dramatic and like, <laughs> it's very like oh no poor man how dare they and um uh yeah they show this because this woman is going around the world hearing about this and she's like oh my god that is terrible. You should never have had to have done that. This should have never happened to you. Never. And then she writes about it in a book. <laughs> it's kind of what happens in the movie. Yeah, man, you know. And, and yeah, I've seen like those sorts of things like the Jew one and the black slave one in like other movies. But hey, now we get all free. Yay. And we also get... um. We also have uh, Trayvon Martin <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Not like actually... <laughs> don't know why I need to specify. Um, yeah, actually, this was... Uh, I would say the movie, I guess, got off on the wrong foot with me because it opens with the whole Trayvon Martin thing. Because it starts off with, like, yeah, I think it starts with, like, a black guy going in, con in a convenience store. And when I saw him buying Skittles and a, um, and a uh, like, a Lipton iced tea... I was like, oh my god, it's it's him. Oh shit, they're going to show this. This is the opening scene of the movie. Ooh. I wonder if they will um, show it as it happened. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, actually, I fucking do know. But you know what? Something I was thinking was... Um, uh, so, I think... Yeah, like, uh, yeah, and, and at the start of the movie, this, like, black bitch is, um, someone tells her, like, a white lady or something, it's like, oh, did you hear about this Trayvon man? He was murdered by this, by this, <laughs> they, they, they call him a Latina. <laughs> they actually went with it. Uh, yeah, they just fucking, uh, this big killed <laughs> this, uh, poor little 12-year-old. <laughs> um, <coughs> and she says, like, uh, yo, they got the, um, the 9-11 call from George Zimmerman, I'm going to send it to you. And this black woman's like, oh my God, I don't think I can listen to it, but oh, I don't know, maybe I will. And then she does. And I was thinking like, oh, are they going to, um, like with the, uh, with the, with, with, like what they did with the news stories where they played this 911 um, call, are they going to take out the bit where he's, he says like, he says, um, there's a guy, he's looking sketchy. The dispatcher says, what does he look like? Is he black, white, Latino? And he says, he looks black. Are they going to take out the dispatcher's um, th thing that she said? So that it makes him sound like there's a sketchy guy. He looks black. He's fucking black, by the way. And I'm Australian. <laughs> there's some fucking blackie walking around. I don't like it. <laughs> Tip typical diversity. Oh, wow. I'm feeling very culturally enriched. Oh, no. He's beating me up. <laughs> So, yeah, and they do. They, the movie did cut that bit out because she is, like, listening to it like it's a bloody podcast. And uh, and I was like, mm -mm, are they going to take it out? Oh, they did. They did the same thing that the news did. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, it matters less for a movie because a movie is, um, you know, you got to cut down on things and trim things up and um, truncate and abbreviate and... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it doesn't really affect the uh, movie that much. But hey, if this was an unedited 911 call, that unedited version, that's what it should be like. Yeah, and uh, and then it shows like then it shows the actual confrontation when um, it, uh, Zimmerman walks up to <laughs> Trayvon. They have a confrontation. It's very. Um, awkwardly filmed it looks super awkward it kind of just looks like them like kind of slapping each other like eh, get off. and then Zimmerman pulls out his gat in the and um, you know yeets <laughs> oh sorry um but yeah I was watching that like mm, that seems like bullshit to me there's no bit where Trayvon is beating Zimmerman's head into the pavement and like he's on top of him that's that was not presented uh, like that, so I'm like, oh, well, this film is kind of, um, I don't, it's getting off on the wrong foot, and this is, like, all in the first, like, 10 or 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> what else is it going to show? And it's like, Ugh. so, yeah, um, 
not cool movie. <laughs> I know you've got an agenda, and I guess that's why you didn't get any Oscar nominations. Yeah, fuck you. Uh, the Cracker Fest that was Oppenheimer, that's winning the Oscars. Yeah, fuck you, dude. <coughs> Yeah, I, I looked into the Trayvon situation um, a while ago because I saw a book in the library called If I Had a Son by Jack Cashel and I read the blurb and it's like, oh, yeah, this is about Trayvon Martin and oh, no, this is Zimmerman, you know, uh, was justified in having to kill him and this is how the news media um, bullshitted uh, the whole s situation and made him out to be the villain and Trayvon to be a little angel and blah 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 and I was like that's bullshit man Zimmerman's a murderer how dare he but then I got it out eventually and I read it and I was like oh it's pretty uh, compelling it's not exactly compelling you're reading it and uh you're just like well this seems to be um what happened it's not like you know oh this is my opinion on what happened they have like all the uh, all, all the facts that are available um, and a lot of the information in that book is actually taken from there was like a group online group that got together all different people from different um, walks in life and they um, got together and spent their free time like sh like talking with each other and showing each other how this news story was being um, bastardized in the media and yeah, I read the book and I was like, I am uh, never watching the news again. <laughs> and I and I haven't to this day. Oh, I, how do I even find out about all these stabbings that are happening? Anyway, and then later on in the movie, like, uh, if that wasn't um, distasteful enough, there's like a bit where there's like a big, you know, rousing racial moment again where it's like, mm -hmm, and it has, um, it shows like, the Holocaust, <laughs> it shows like a Jewish people being thrown down and an SS guard pointing a gun at them and um, and, the, and the Jew is crying, oh, no, and, and, it, and it like keeps cutting between that and Trayvon and it shows like both of those people like getting shot, like it cuts between them two to show that that's like a similar thing, I guess. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> this isn't cool, man. This is, <laughs> God damn, it's like... um. No, the Holocaust was, uh, <laughs> was different to that specific uh, situation. But all right, whatever, you're putting it in a movie. Yeah, I'm just so sick of like all these like, you know, like it's literally like a kind of a joke, like a meme to myself about like watching a movie about how bad black slaves had it and how it like there'll always be a shot of like a black slave like slow-mo you know um um really sh shallow lens really glassy looking and he's like 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 his mouth is wide open and his eyes are closed he's in pain he's being whipped or something he's got sweat pouring off him and he's like ah ah mate <laughs> he's an australian african australian slave in america god that sounds like um some sort of slave exploitation movie um, yeah, like that was literally like a meme to myself in my head. And then I'm seeing it in this movie and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's just like the film just shows a bunch of stuff where it's like, oh, isn't this depressing? And you're like, wow, this is, um, a real misery fest, this film. Like there's a really, um, there is like a pretty, like, um, I guess you'd say heartbreaking scene where in the fifties, there was like a baseball team. And they had, like, one um, black kid on the team. Uh, and the team, like, has a win or something. Like, some sort of final game. They go out to a pool for celebrations. But the uh, the pool is like, oh, that black kid can't be in here. And he has to sit outside. And he, he's not allowed in the pool. <laughs> Pool's closed now. And uh, he... Um, so he has to sit outside, but like a lot of the kids are like, oh, come on, man, let him, let him in the pool. And even the coach is like, come on, this kid's on my team. He should be able to be in the pool. And they're like, no, he's black. He's unclean. And then, <coughs> then they decide, all right, here's what we're going to do. Everyone out of the pool will put the black kid on like a floatable thing. He has to stay on it really still. I'll push him around in this empty pool and he cannot at all touch the water in the pool so they do that they show that in the movie and the kid just looks like just he's like oh god you didn't have to do this like <laughs> this is more awkward this is worse i'm like just sitting on this floatable thing in the pool and the guy's pushing me around and i have to be really still and not 
move at all and everyone's looking at me this is worse than just sitting outside and it's like oh isn't this bad that this happened and the guy the uh the main woman in the movie when she hears about this she's like that should have never happened to you i'ma put it in my book (laughs) um yeah and you watch it like oh isn't that terrible it's just like the kind of fucking film where like old white ladies with like butch haircuts like really short unsexy haircuts just watch this and go oh oh wasn't oh, that terrible mm. oh dear <laughs> it's like great <laughs> what else is going to happen in this fucking movie is it actually going to say anything about anything or is it just a misery fest it's kind of like hostel but instead of people being tortured it's just black people having a bad time <laughs> or jews or whoever indians <laughs> diving in poo yeah, and it just just doesn't even seem like the the film is all about like c- cast case cast about like people being subjugated and whatever. And this woman's just like, oh my god, um, black slaves throughout the for like you know those two hundred years. Oh, isn't that terrible? And um, also the Holocaust. And um, and, oh, I'm now finding out about these Indian people that have to f- swim around in poo. Oh, how terrible! And that's kind of it. There's, there's like a very, very, very limited history that they cover about like subjugation. It's not, they don't even like go back into BC times at all. They're just like, well, these are the most recent, not like, certainly not the most recent. They're just the, at least those, the Holocaust and <clears throat> American slavery are just like two of the most, um, famous most well-known uh cat cased forms of cased cast cast yeah and uh that's why they really gravitate on that in the film so you're like oh okay yeah and there's also some other stuff where like um this this woman she has a a a, a husband <laughs> he's white um he dies this isn't a spoiler. This is early on in the movie. He just, he just, he dies of death. He just comes home and he's just like, oh, uh, and just falls down. And she's like, oh no, my Richard or whatever his name is. And then there's like a big, like pretentious A24 kind of style <coughs> thing where she's has visions or whatever of like her family being like, you got to move on. You got to write him in the book or whatever. Continue writing your book. You need to grieve or stop grieving or something. I don't know. Yeah, so it's it's just like this whole bit. And it's very like emotional and very like and loud and everything. Um, it's not really that bad. Because <coughs> like, I, I do like the music in the movie as well. And some of that pretentiousness was, was okay. I'm fine with that. It works for what it is. The problem is just this happens like in the first 20 minutes of the movie. It's like, um, all right, like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Who's, uh, oh, he was your husband, and he's like, kind of a, hey, you know, I'm a white liberal, yeah, but I understand my privilege, and oh, but sometimes I can come off like a, I could joke about woke, boop, do, do, oh, I'm dead, <laughs> and that's it. So, um, yeah, and that's it, and. It's, yeah, that's why I'm saying like this movie just doesn't emotionally work because it's just kind of really confused and inert and all over the place. And I think in that kind of way, it uh, oh, I'm tired. It just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't work. And I um, yeah, and I don't like it. I didn't. I'm actually trying to be nice to the movie, but I'm like, nah, fuck that. It's just um, who gives a fuck? Uh. Fuck me, it's 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, I know it's Rotten Tomatoes, and it's like, oh, of course they're going to give a woke movie, bloody big high rotten uh, uh, tomato score, of course it's going to be close to just because it's got black people in it talking about race and blah, blah, blah. And I know the metric of um, Rotten Tomatoes is certainly, like, who gives a fuck? Whereas 75% on uh, Metacritic, I mean, even that's much higher than the fucking score I'd give it. And then... Oh, wait. It's 81% on the tomato meter. 
This is from critics, and it's 97 from the audience. So, oh, wow, all these people watched it, and we're like, oh, oh my God, how terrible for all these black kids. Ooh, you couldn't be in the pool. Wow, 10 out of 10 movie. <laughs> so, anyway, fuck, I'm so tired. I, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to go now. <laughs> I can't wait to listen back on all of this. <laughs> Those are the noises I make when my phone is fucking with me. <laughs> what a great start to this podcast. I might throw it at the end. 